Good morning. Everything about this incident was difficult for everyone involved. We are going to continue to work to be a transparent and accountable organization for the communities that we serve. As difficult as this video is to watch, it shows our officer in the right place and working to keep the community safe. The loss of a life is a devastating and tragic occurrence. And the pain of this incident is felt by everyone who was involved. In accordance with our body-worn video release policy, we are releasing the video today in its full format, as well as providing some details to allow everyone to view the video in context. I'm going to turn it over at this time to Colonel Robert McCullough, the commanding officer of our Criminal Investigations Bureau. Good morning. I'm Colonel Robert McCullough, Chief of the Criminal Investigations Bureau for the Baltimore County Police Department. We are here to provide you with information about a police-involved shooting that occurred on May the 16th, 2020 in the Essex Precinct. We will be providing you with relevant video footage and other information in this case so that you can have a better understanding about what happened on that evening. It's important to remember that the, this incident is still under investigation and additional facts may come, come to light at a later time. This release of the BWC video is in keeping with our department's policy of releasing the BWC for this type of incident within 30 business days, as previously stated by Chief Hyatt. I would like to first lay out the details of that evening for you, and then we will take a look at the video. On May the 16th, 2020 at 10.42 p.m., Officer Knight, ID number 4062 of the Baltimore County Police Department was dispatched to the unit block of Skip Jack Court in Essex for a nuisance call. The anonymous caller advised that there was a crowd outside um, and the young men were drinking. He then observed the suspect vehicle at Green Buick Park Avenue being driven erratically by a subject who would later be identified as Robert Johnson Jr. Officer Knight then requested additional backup units to respond to the location. Once the vehicle parked, Officer Knight exited his marked police vehicle in an effort to make contact with the driver of the car. It was at this point that the driver exited the vehicle, dropping what appeared to be a handgun on the ground. The suspect, Robert Johnson, then immediately went to retrieve the weapon and picked up the, the weapon off the ground. Commands given by Officer Knight were ignored and the officer subsequently discharged his weapon. A, pursuit, a foot pursuit ensued and the suspect ran off with the handgun towards the other townhomes on the court. It is at this point that Officer Knight discharges his weapon again striking suspect Johnson. Medics were immediately requested. Once the scene was secured, Officer Knight and the backup officers rendered aid to Mr. Johnson and he was transported to Shock Trauma Hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. There was a second subject struck by the officer's gunshots. He received an apparent gunshot wound to his leg. He was transported to Johns Hopkins Hospital where he was treated and released. The Homicide Unit and the Internal Affairs Division responded and conducted their investigations. The Baltimore County State's Attorney's Office has issued a declination letter in this case and Officer Knight is currently back working uh, at his assigned duties um, working patrol in Essex. First of all, a, uh, a word of caution to all viewers. The images and information you're about to see may be disturbing. When a police officer uses force, it can be graphic and difficult to watch. In addition, we must be cognizant of the fact that we are watching someone who has just lost their life. The sanctity of life is important to the men and women of the Baltimore County Police Department. Baltimore County 911, what's the address of your emergency?
Okay, repeat your address so I can get help started for you. Repeat your address for me so I can send an officer out there. Okay, and you said Skipjack Court, and that's near Seagate Court. And that's in Essex, correct? You said they're in the parking lot? Okay, I'm left to be off of none. What's your phone number in case we get disconnected? Okay, I'll let the officers know you want to be anonymous. Just stand on line. I'm going to ask you a couple questions, okay? All right, I sent a call for dispatch. These questions are not delaying help. They're just helping them on their way. If you don't know the answer, it's okay to say unknown. I'm selling some information. Were weapons involved or mentioned? And I used to have a group of young guys, but how many people are involved? All right, I'm letting them know that. Stay on the line with me. And how did they arrive? Do you know what color the vehicles are that came in? Is that a Ford or a Tudor SUV? All right, lock your doors and windows and do not disturb anything at the scene. An officer will be dispatched as soon as possible. Do you know if anyone on scene has a fever or cough? I understand. You are anonymous, so they won't. There's nothing comes back to you. And just call us back. You can leave anything changed to your further information if they do leave. Okay. You're welcome. All right. You too. Bye bye. Eleven twelve Nathan. Skip Jack Court. Skip Jack Court. Near Seagate Court in the dead end, anonymous complaint says in the parking lot there's a crowd of young guys drinking all over the vehicles outside, following residences up to their house. 20 to 30 subjects involved. Do you want a second unit? 1112, I'm directing negative. 10 4 2242. 1112, no emergency, but would you send someone out to this place? Unit back 1112 on Skipjack Court. 11, I'm right here. Five over there, I can hold them a little bit. 10-4, it's going to be Skipjack Court. Number 12, shots fired, I need now. Unit, Skipjack Court, dispatch all units, shots fired on Skipjack Court. Eleven twelve, twelve. 12 checking on you, dispatch all units, respond to Skipjack Court. Don't move! Eleven twelve. I have one person shot, I need a medic. I have one occupant inside a car, he's not secure. Eleven twelve, no emergency, but would you send someone else this way, please? Hey, that's three cars, dude. You want to stop?
You got your license, bud? Oh, oh, don't! 11, 12, shots fired. I need better than that. Stop! On the ground, on the ground! Don't move! Hands! Hands! Let me see your hands! Hands! Don't move! Put your hands out to the side! Put them to the side! Do not move! Do not move! Don't move! 11, 12. I have one person shot. I need a medic. I have one occupant inside a car. He's not secure. Now we uh, will show you a part of the video and it's, uh, it'll be slowed down and I'll, I'll point out a few things to you. So when Officer Knight pulls into the court, uh, we know uh, that the suspect vehicle has already been driving erratically in that court. And you see him backing in and out of parking space in front of Officer Knight. Uh, we know to this point that the person had hit three vehicles. There you see the gun when he's exiting the vehicle. Mr. Johnson exits the vehicle, but the gun strikes the ground. Of course, in addition to seeing it, Officer Knight hears the sound of that gun hitting the ground, so he immediately detects a threat there. Next, we're at the top of the court. You see the gun and Mr. Knight's, I mean, Mr. Johnson's right hand. And this is after numerous times that Officer Knight commanded him to, to stop and to, to not pick up that weapon and to drop that weapon. And lastly, you see a picture of the, uh, the Remington 45 caliber handgun there. In addition to recovering that handgun, we also recovered um, a, uh, a bag that was in the possession of Mr. Johnson and, and in that bag contained a distribution amount of, of marijuana also.